Hello, gentles and lady men. I'm Ulan Gaming, and today I want to tell you all about why you are wrong about which age up options for USA are the best. As a bit of an introduction to myself, I have been playing USA since it came out and have a video on literally every update to come out for this game since it released, and thus am very in tuned and knowledgeable on the current balance patch and how it affects USA. I know the history of each age up option in this game and how they have changed, gotten better or worse over time. With that said, this is an entirely subjective end of my own opinion. If you disagree, that's perfectly fine, but also know that you are also wrong because my opinion is the best opinion because I'm a famous YouTuber and you are not. <laughs> As an introduction to USA and its unique age up system, each age up for USA provides two new cards that are added to your deck. This sieve overall has the most unique and overall most powerful shipments in the game, but they are shipments that require time to pass in order to get their full value, or only see value when combined with other USA cards to make nifty combinations, thus resulting in the most versatile and unique roster of viable strategies of any civilization. This coming at the cost of inflexibility and card comboing doesn't, as card com comboing, doesn't allow for flexibility as easily as other civilizations. With that, let's go over age two federal states. The two most commonly used are Pennsylvania and Virginia in this category, and for good reason, as they are both very solid age up options. They are what I refer to as the everyman age ups, being solid and serviceable in most situations. But they are not only the only age ups, as there are three others that are all worth it in their own unique way. Let's start with Massachusetts, a solid option for treaty matches, all out greed, or a very unique age two strategy. This age up option gives a military wagon and access to two fantastic cards. Plymouth Settlers ships a scout and 300 food, and makes every existing town center spawn three settlers. This card is rather lackluster in Age 2, however it can be quite useful as an early 9 settler shipment by fast fortressing and making three TCs as fast as possible using the state capital. However, this is a risky venture as it's extremely greedy, and a far safer option is to use the similar Marines strategy. In a match where you know you have the space to be greedy, however, not many options beat this, allowing you to have three TCs and a huge nine settler shipment well before ten minutes. The other card that comes with Massachusetts is Boston Tea Party, a conversion card that swaps food for a greater amount of coin. Many players will make the mistake of dismissing this card as nothing more than a treaty card. However, this card is actually designed to be useful in the early game as well as the end game, adding a flat 350 coin to the converted 25% total and arriving in only 5 seconds allows you to extremely quickly rack, large amounts of, rack up large amounts of coin, turning 11 to 1400 food into a massive 2000 plus coin by the six minute mark. This can be used to easily and quickly gather all the coin for age three and four in one shipment for fast industrials, or be used to high, afford high costing coin rushes as hussars or uh, such as hussars or age two sharpshooters. Especially, the H2 sharpshooters are particularly good as, in conjunction with the Springfield Armory and counter-infantry rifling, sharpshooters get a 3.5 times against heavy infantry and 3-shot musketeers, making Massachusetts an extremely effective, if slightly niche, H2 fighting option as not even the bank and Pennsylvania pound even approach the speed at which you can afford sharpshooters with the strategy. This age up option is extremely underutilized and I have more than one video about it. Try it out. The second aged up option, Virginia, we will see that this provides a military wagon like the other age two states, but it has some interesting cards. Its first and most important card is Virginia Planning, a shipment that adds two shipments to your stockpile on arrival. A card that by itself is the best card in the entire game without any competition. You think a factory is better than Virginia Planning? You may be right, but Virginia Planning allows me to ship two factories, so beat it. This king, uh, card is the undeniable king of shipments and plays a huge role in keeping USA as the premier shipment sieve in the game. 
That said, it's not right for every strategy. In particular, if you plan on staying age 2 for long periods of time, and especially if you're being rushed, the 40 seconds it takes to be allowed to wait for another 40 seconds for your first shipment in age 2 is way too long and will result in your demise. This card is slow and should only be used when you have a moment, such as when you are aging or before you send 700 coin when you don't quite need it yet. As such, Virginia Planning is best used in conjunction with fast fortresses and fast industrial strategies, though there is an argument that Massachusetts may be better for some of those same strategies simply for saving shipments, like not having to send 1,000 coin at all, especially for fast industrials. Regardless, if you're planning on doing a fast fortress, there is no better card in the game for your strategy. The other card provided for Virginia is Culpepper Minutemen, which causes each town center to spawn six Minutemen. This is the military variant to Massachusetts and is highly preferable in most cases, as doing a huge push of marines by sending this with three TCs is precisely what the doctor ordered at ten minutes. However, doing a marine's Culpepper strategy will overpop you by quite a bit and your and will stunt your economy uh, at the benefit of not really needing much of an economy in the first place to afford your military because marines are cheap as hell. Uh, it pushes you into almost entirely focusing on marines with little else as an option to you militarily for a while. By the contrast, the Massachusetts age th uh, three settlers per town is a massive economic boost that leaves you open and vulnerable and does not result in a power spike. It's a matter of whether you prefer a boom or a timing push. 90% of the time, the timing push is the better deal, but there are exceptions. Opting to discuss Delaware last, we're going to skip it and move on to Pennsylvania. This is the everyman age up option. If you are struggling to decide which age up is best for your, uh, for, for your particular strategy, Pennsylvania is here to serve your needs. This age up option is designed to support and enable other strategies as opposed to have other, uh, as opposed to the other age up options which are made to have strategies designed around them. This age up provides the customary two, uh, age two military wagon, an advanced church card that provides a powerful coin trickle that comes with uh, unit pops of sharp shooters or carbines at the cost of food if needed in tough situations. The coin trickle is often combined with Dutch immigrants, capitalism, and advanced saloons to provide a huge amount of coin income to afford constant outlaws and mercenaries. The other card provided is the Tamani Festival, a card that allies you with the Cree, allowing you to train up to 5 Courier de Bois, up to 13 Cree trackers, and, which are very tanky skir t skirmishers that cost no population, and access to techs that slightly increase land military stats and slightly decrease building costs across the board. There is nothing bad or unusable about Pennsylvania if you didn't already... Ha if you didn't already have a state of mind... If there is nothing bad or unusable for Pennsylvania if you didn't already have a state in mind when you created your strategy. Pennsylvania is likely the answer to your question. There isn't a strategy out there that Pennsylvania can't add at least something to, even if it might not always be the best choice for some strategies. Overall, easily the most versatile age up option of the bunch, though not the one I usually take as I am a sucker for hyper-specialized strategies. Rhode Island provides the customary two military wagon, of course, and unlike the other states, is an extremely open, obvious, and upfront with what strategies it's made to be used for. This strategy is this state is used for water play, as it holds the civilization equivalent of schooners. Except instead of only reducing the cost of boats, it also reduces the cost of settlers, allowing for very cheap booming. There is something to be said about having schooners being locked to age two which does indeed suck to a degree, but this is mitigated at least by the fact that the card also applies the cost reduction to all settlers and fishing boats you've already made and reimburses you the difference, giving 20 wood per boat and 30 food for per settler that you already own. Unfortunately, the problem with USA going water is that while you can do it, and relatively effectively, sloops and steamers are just worse than caravels and galleys, and you'll lose fights unless you outmast your opponent really early. 
if you can hit the water fast and claim it before you have competition, it's a wonderful option. But because it requires a specific age up in order to effectively go water, and there's no guarantee your opponent won't just do it better, it's often seen as a much too risky of an age up option if you're planning on using it for water. Uh, and that's really generally why USA doesn't go water. The other card is tech, Textile Mills is similar to House of Braganza from Portugal. It allows you to upgrade the trade line to Stagecoach and to the train for free and in Age 2. It also enables Steamers and Ironclads in Age Early, but that's not really relevant. This card is amazing if you are planning on playing around map with map control and controlling the trade line. Having an Age 2 train is one of the best feelings out there, and you'll have plenty of resource income. It also synergizes with the Chinese immigrants, allowing you to levy for trade post wagons instead of Minutemen. However, I would actually recommend just doing the French immigrant start instead of the Chinese and avoiding trade post normally, uh, as even though it has less technical synergy, um, you want a powerful economic base to go with your trade post boom, and the Chinese immigrants kind of stunts you a little bit. And it also prevents you from making Minutemen, which is like one of the USA's strongest assets. But, you know, that's most cases. Sometimes you might want Chinese immigrants. It's really up to you. Overall, Rhode Island is an extremely powerful in exact state for exactly one strategy uh, that can be tricky to pull off and map dependent. Keep it in mind, however, as the quality may just surprise you. Lastly is Delaware for Age 2. Delaware is the black sheep of the Age 2 states. It only costs 700 to age up instead of the usual 800, so you can age up a little early. Uh, but it provides 300 food instead of a military wagon. Its Age 2 shipment is a scaling regular shipment. It ships one regular for each shipment you've already sent in the game, which actually comes up quite frequently in some of these federal state age in some of these federal cards. And uh, a ship, uh, the other shipment is one that provides six semi-fattened cows and two homestead wagons. This used to actually be one of the most powerful age-up options, as this card would be combined with advanced homesteading and German immigrants to attain a huge amount of line of sight, population, and settler wagons very early on in the game, and rush with state militia very early on. However, uh, state militia received nerf after nerf over the years and turned into, my own, in my own opinion, an absolute piece of shit of a unit. And as a result, the strategy lost a lot of traction and users and fell off. Uh, this age up option is still usable for specific strategies, but overall there are pretty much better options for everything. Of all the age up 2 options, this is by far the worst and the only one I do not recommend. Overall, except for Delaware, all the age-up options are very strong into the second age and keep a pretty high quality depending on the strategy you are going for, even if some are more niche and, less stra and have less strategy diversity. Uh, Pennsylvania and Rhode Island used to be far worse uh, than they are now as they used to provide outpost wagons instead of military wagons, but ever since that change they have attained a very solid and equal quality across the board. Uh, the ones, the, 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 these ones were relatively easy to go over. It's the age three states that everyone debates uh, the most and where I have the hottest takes and where I think the community at large is the most wrong about which states are best. So let's get into it. Okay, let's start with Indiana. The state is really cool and super good and also niche as hell. Indiana sends five regulars as its shipment and provides access to two extremely cool cards. The more famous of the two is Indiana Mammoth Improvement Act, a card that arrives in five seconds and makes your age up to age four completely free in exchange for making it take six and a half minutes to get there. This sounds like an incredible trade-off, and it is. However, it's easy to forget at first when just reading the card that aging up also idles your TC and this will make you unable to train villagers out of one of your TCs for six and a half minutes. In most cases, this is a complete no-go. However, if you have three TCs early on in the game, it can be worth it, especially if you are doing something like Marines where you aren't going to be able to afford settlers for several minutes after hitting age three. Suddenly, in cases like that, where you have three TCs and not enough free eco to even produce out of two, it's suddenly a kick-ass option as you have no downsides. 
Another thing you can do is save it for when you're in age 4 and looking to get to age 5, as it reduces the cost from 4k of each resource to just 2,400 of each, and at the cost of making it 6.5 minutes again. Uh, this is a huge boon and will allow you to afford to go to age 5 far sooner than other players, and at a time when you're probably capped on settlers anyways, or at least close to it. This could mean the difference between hitting age 5 at 25 to 30 minutes, or hitting it at 40 to 45 minutes in heavy action-packed games. This provides a surprising amount of benefit, and if none of the other age-up options appeal to you and your strategy, and you feel like the game will go for a longer period of time than you originally anticipated, preemptively getting ready for a cheap age 5 might not be the worst option. The other card sends one Carbine Cavalry for each shipment sent so far in the game, and boosts all train time by 10%. I actually like this card, uh, as often when I pick Indiana, I'm doing the Marines strategy, and have a weakness to anti-cavalry, and having the option to suddenly attain a huge mass of anti-cav all at once is extremely helpful. Also, the shipment that sends Carbine Cavs, the worst... It, it, it is kind of funny that the, the shipment that sends Carbine Cavs, the worst USA unit, is actually my most used and most useful of all the USA per shipment shipments. Uh, it also has a secondary bonus of boosting all train time across the board by 10%, which importantly affects heavy cannons. Overall, Indiana is a little niche, but plays an extremely powerful role in strategies that use it and can give you a huge advantage at a staggeringly quick rate if the game goes a little bit longer than 10 minutes, and if your opponent isn't expecting it. Alright, now time to piss people off. New Hampshire is next. This age-up option is by far the worst age-up option uh, available to USA in age 3 by a sizable margin. Do not get me wrong, it used to be the best with absolutely no competition, but it's not anymore, and those days are long gone. This state provides five regulars, um, as, as its bonus, a standard and solid unit shipment. Uh, the first of its two cards is a factory wagon. Yes, a factory wagon. Uh, in age three, instead of age four. USA and Mexico are the only civs, uh, to my knowledge, that get factories earlier than age four. Mexico can do it in certain revolts, and you get an early factory at the cost of not having any settlers in the revolt that you get your factory with, making it solely responsible for a majority of your economy. In the USA's case, there are there used to be no downside at all other than that the upgrades weren't available until age 4, which also applies to Mexico. And while this it was the case, you could just casually send an age 3 factory, uh, and it was, it, it was, it, well, this was the case, you could just casually send an H3 factory, and it was the best federal card by a huge amount. 5.5 resources per second cannot be understated, and when set to wood, this is the equivalent of 11 settlers. However, the devs justifiably un, uh, added a resource cost to it, making it cost 500 food and 500 wood. 1,000 resources total makes this card just not worth it compared to the other states, especially when I go over Maryland. Uh, at 5.5 resources per second, it takes three full minutes, 181 seconds to be exact, of resource collection before you even break even with 1,000 resources gathered at the factory and actually start getting benefit out of it. This is just too slow in pretty much all cases, especially when I, again, when I compare it to Maryland when I get to it next. Uh, the other New Hampshire card is French Cannons, a shipment that provides two Napoleon guns, enables them to be made at the saloon, and nope, that's it. Uh, it's pretty lackluster and performs worse against infantry than just the normal three Gatling gun shipment that is rolling artillery. The only thing that Napoleon guns have is a little bit more range than Gats, and they perform slightly better against Falconets. But, I mean, really, you're, you're better off just sending rolling artillery. Especially because they are so comparable, uh, but French Cannons requires the New Hampshire, the New Hampshire age up, and therefore takes your opportunity cost to... Uh, it takes away your opportunity to get better, op uh, better age up options. Like our next state, Maryland! Okay, Maryland is actually insane, and nobody realizes it. Now, 
obviously the caveat is that this is a water based age up uh, if there is but, but if there is water on your map and you are doing standard play instead of hyper specialized strategies this should almost always be your go to option in age 3 with very little exception I know people are scratching their heads a little at this but it really is that good now the, this does come with the again the caveat that you're playing on a water map but if you are, just just use Maryland. Okay, J just use it. Uh, the state ships you a sloop to start, which is obviously better than five regulars. You can fight under its range near the shore, making it basically a more mobile tanky falconet, which I don't need to tell you is better than five regulars or four sharpshooters. You can evacuate settlers with it if you're under attack, transport your explorers to islands to get big treasures or make a TC or whatever. Uh, scout and potentially stop an enemy from water booming if they've gone unchallenged up to this point. You get so much use out of this loop. You can transport troops with it to the enemy's base to attack from an unexpected angle. And when you aren't doing any of that, you can use your sloop to fish for food. This is the first card. Uh, it's insane. Like, the sloop is way better than five regulars or four chargers. The first card that this age up provides um, is a sloop containing six Minutemen, and then also enables Minutemen to increase the attacks of ships uh, that they are garrisoned in by 10% each, up to six Minutemen per ship. This is absolutely insane, and will allow the USA water to suddenly spike in power, and easily take the water from pretty much any sieve all at once if it was under contest. This card synergizes with USA's Minutemen mechanic by essentially allowing you to levy for a 60% attack buff with a ship which is insane. Uh, and when there is no more use for the ship, just drop off the Minutemen, and you have a small army started. Well, USA generally doesn't do uh, well starting with water, it does really well at taking the water later in the game and locking it down. However, this is a situational card, and you won't always want to send, as there won't always be a need for it. If your opponent doesn't go water, after all, this card is pointless. However, the other Maryland card uh, th that, it has, that you get access to is what really makes this an insane age-up option, and it's the reason I make fun of New Hampshire and call it the worst age-up option to age 3. Cheapskate Oyster Pirates is probably OP, in all honesty. This card enables sloops and steamers to gather coin from fish instead of food, and at an increased gather rate, in addition with to sending a sloop giving you a total of two sloops from your age up, or three sloops if you sent the other card. Why this is crazy is because of the gather rate increase. Your sloops go from collecting 0 0.67 food per second from a fish to 2.01 coin per second from fish. And this is from a separate untapped resource from the normal land resources that your settlers are collecting from. From warships that can defend themselves, and also cause no population. Since you have a minimum, a minimum of two sloops when sending the shipment, this shipment gives you 4.02 coin per second of gathering for free. Suddenly, compared to the shitty, in comparison, 5.5 resources per second at the cost of 1,000 resources, this ain't looking too bad. Now is it? 4.02 for free versus 5.5 for 1,000 resources? Now, the fish aren't infinite, of course, but the value this provides is insane and will last you a very long time, since fish are not harvested in a majority of games played on water maps. And if you want it to be even faster than 4.02, then all you have to do is, you know, make more sloops. For 200 wood and 200 coin, you can build another sloop and increase this to 6.03. At literally 40% of the cost of the factory, you get more. Use Maryland. It's basically the factory before it was nerfed, and slight, uh, but, but slightly more limited, because you do run out of fish. You also get to use these in addition to the two factories you get in H4, instead of using up one of your build limit in H2 right away. Literally anybody, uh, literally everybody ignores this age up, and it's the best H3 option by a large margin. Like, seriously, use this card. It's, 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 it's insane. Maryland is OP. Another sleeper hit is Tennessee. Providing four sharpshooters, this state offers some pretty neat cards, only one of which is good, but hey, we can't all be Maryland, can we? 
Over Mountain Settlers is the card in question, which ships four settlers and increases their range by six and their attack by 12. It also adds 25% extra yield to all natural resources. This card is kind of a sleeper card. Uh, it's super good and with French Immigrants makes your settlers really pack a punch, sporting 18 attack. Uh, with Frontiersmen, as well as the Market Tech, they'll have 255 HP. Your sellers will be able to pretty easily fight off pretty much any raid that comes their way, as well as participate in town defense. Your opponent will have an extremely difficult time pushing in when you can outrange and outspeed his musketeers with your settlers, and your, your settlers also have more HP than them, and also come with range resistance. Uh, if you did a French Immigrant start, this is a very easy way to make you basically unraidable. Attain the most powerful bon uh, defense bonus available to USA, still get some eco out of it because you get four settlers, and, oh yeah, be able to stay on natural resources for 25% longer than every other player in the game. Yeah, this card rocks, but it's kind of unassuming. Still, you'll be able to slaughter most bushes that come into your base, and you can even have your settlers push into your opponent's base without needing to revolt. It's really fun to BM on them by using their natural resources right under their TC. You'll love it. Uh, the other card is basically useless. It provides two outposts, makes all existing and new outposts spawn two state militia, and makes outposts provide ten population each. Not fantastic by a long shot, and basically it's just a worse version of the advanced homestead green mountain boys combo, uh, and also has to deal with the outpost build limit. You just ignore this card, it's, you're better off you know, pretending it doesn't exist. Alright, so Kentucky is our last age 3 option, and this one is a doozy. This is the most frequently taken age 3 in current USA play, and it's a decent one for sure. I'd say it's comparable to Tennessee in quality. Like Tennessee, it provides four sharpshooters. The first card ships two coal mines, which is a mine of 2,000 coin that gathers twice as fast as a normal mine. The, this card by itself is already hella worth it for Kentucky, uh, which is good because the other card is lackluster. Uh, it ships one sharpshooter per shipment, and a sense so far this game, and adds extra range to the Owl Hoot, an outlaw unit you probably aren't using with Kentucky since you probably wanted the coin gather from Maryland instead. Uh, this card used to be insane, having a resource cost, uh, and instead providing two sharpshooters per shipment, allowing for a relatively early massive shipment of 24 plus sharpshooters. Unfortunately, since this card's nerf, the whole age 3 overall feels kind of lackluster. So really the question is, uh, do you want the 4,000 coin from the, from the coal mines that you have to mine, uh, or uber juggernaut settlers plus, with, with plus four extras and the ability to get more resources out of the natural ones you already have on the field? For me, Tennessee is the victor. Uh, for you, could go either way. I'm not sure. It's up to personal preference. Either way, if given the opportunity to go Maryland, do so because it's easily the best and the community is stupid for not realizing this. In H4, USA gets both factories added to the deck in addition to the federal cards. Due to factories being so good, uh, very little com uh, that very little compares, not to mention some of USA's H4 cards being very high priority sends for a lot of builds, such as Minimen companies, uh, the federal cards themselves take a back seat to the actual age up bonus itself with the four states, making them a little more cut and dry. So let's go over them now. South Carolina used to be the best age for for a long time. It sends 600 wood and has a hugely beneficial upgrade for state militia in one of its cards, allowing them to construct military buildings, making them get an additional 10% attack bonus from the flag for 20% total attack, and all this coming with a nifty shipment of 12 of them. Unfortunately, state militia were nerfed into the ground over the years, and they just aren't worth it usually in the late game. And as such, this age-up has fallen out of favor. The other card is Marion's Diversions, a card that allows you to train Quaker guns from the Artillery Foundry. An infinitely worse alternative to the infinite five, Team 5 Quaker gun card available to USA starting in H4. Just use that, it's way better. Speaking of, Quaker guns are amazing, and you should use them. That's all. Moving on. Vermont also gives 600 wood, and basically you aren't going to use it unless you're doing a mill state militia spawn strategy. 
I don't recommend the strategy unless you have some synergistic native text, especially with the 2P, and we're going to use 2P as uh, our example here. But if you combine the 2P tech, the Cree building cost reduction tech, land grab, and Oregon Trail from the state capital, you can lower the cost of mills down to 28 wood for a mill wagon at the state capital. This can be comboed with advanced homesteading to make mills support population and provide line of sight. And all of that can be further comboed with the Vermont Green uh, Card Green Mountain Boys, which makes all existing and future mills spawn three state militia. All of this allows you to basically train uh, three state militia in five seconds by making a mill for 28 wood from a wagon. Uh, this suddenly turns state militia from the worst USA unit, uh, besides carbine cavalry, to the best unit they have in terms of resource cost to stats. And you can easily afford, like, a 107 po uh, 170 population armies with, like, only 30 mills, and completely cover the entire map in mills, which is actually hilarious and super funny to watch. You have complete vision over basically the whole map, but if you aren't doing this particular strategy, this card is useless. Uh, three state militia per 400 wood is, is a pretty shit deal. And other Vermont cards... The other Vermont card makes estate upgrades free and research instantly. Yay. It's Argarian ways, but worse. whoop de fucking do Alright, California is the next age up, and uh, this is the everyman age up for age four. This card gives you a, uh, this, not card, the state gives you a town center wagon and raises the build limit to four as its immediate bonus. Who doesn't want that? Like, seriously, it's so good. It's, it's, no, it's a fourth TC. Yay. Just, yeah, for free. Uh, the cards are good, too. Uh, the Bear Flag Revolt is a great stalemate under card in the event that you'd never use Tennessee's Overmountain Settlers card. This turns all of your settlers into dragoons with an area of effect attack, kind of like the hack and pellet, and also allows your flag to spawn grizzly bears, because why not, you know? Uh, this revolt is neat as it's not a true revolt, so you can train settlers immediately to replace the ones you just lost. Uh, this can be done extremely quickly with British immigrants, or can be done for free with, the, with California's other card, uh, which we'll talk about in a second. But there's nothing more satisfying in the world than casually spawning a group of angry age 4 grizzly bears in the exact middle of your opponent's army for no other reason than to cause chaos. It's absolutely hysterical, and if you've never done it before, you gotta try it, just, just for fun. Even if you lose the game, because it, California Bear Flag Revolt is not the best revolt in the game. <laughs> um, but it's so much fun. Uh, the other card allows, allows your town centers to spawn settlers for free, like you're the Ottomans. It also ships a gold mine, uh, which, which has 5,000 more natural coin before you gotta switch to estates. So great. Uh, most impressively, however, there's a neat trick to this card where it begins, where when it begins spawning settlers for free, it takes away your ability to manually train settlers, but it won't stop your town center from training any settlers already queued up before the shipment arrives. So what you do is right before it arrives, you click all your TCs and spam the villager button until you're out of food. Um, and then this allows you to temporarily make each town center train settlers two at a time because it will be training settlers and spawning settlers at the same time, which is pretty cool. Uh, this card will solve all your economy and settler production issues for the rest of the game, especially if you choose to revolt. High recommendation. I take this in 9 out of 10 games. Alright, uh, New Jersey sucks and should not be used under any circumstances. It ships a horse artillery, which is good, but not a town center. Uh, age one adds 900, uh, card one adds 900 resources to all resource shipments and allows them to be sent again. Problem is, by age four, you don't get shipments often enough for this to be worth it, and USA has so many other high priority and high quality cards that it feels like there's never a good time for it. Uh, you don't even really get anything out of it in, in the immediate sense. Uh, this used to be useful back when you could use an unintended tech to reach H4 sub-10 minutes by using Indiana Mammoth Improvement Tech, and was notably the go-to strategy for Lionheart at the time. That said, this bug is no longer in the game, and New Jersey is back to sucking ass. 
the other card makes all shipments arrive in five seconds in the future and delivers four wagons, which can turn into just about any building you want. Whoopee. Ohio, on the other hand, is pretty awesome and a great alternative to California under certain circumstances. It ships a horse artillery, which, again, is no TC, but it has much better cards than New Jersey, so it gets away with it. Uh, card one is three culverns and a fort with an increased build limit. What USA player doesn't want another fort and the ability to stop artillery from shooting it down? A great card that gives exactly what's on the tin and nothing more. Card two, however, is the real treat. Team Ohio Supply Network doubles the resource gain from, tra from the trade line for your entire team, and also adds a 1 XP per second trickle to all native trade posts uh, for your team. If you are on a trade post heavy map, you gotta try this out. Double trade line gain is insane, and keeps the trade line relevant through the entire game. Other civs that ha have cards that function similar and earlier, but there are small bonuses to the trade line, like 25 to 35%. No other shipment in the entire game comes even close to doubling the trade line's effectiveness, you know, plus 100%. It's a, frankly, r ridiculous card that gets nowhere near as much use as it deserves. If you hit age 4 and notice a big trade line on the map, or you did a trade post boom with Rhode Island and are now in age 4, use this card. You'll, it'll do you a lot of good. The H5 federal states range from useless to crazy high value with no in-between. Uh, funny enough, despite being one of only two civilizations with H5 shipments, the H5 shipments you get are actually not really that much better than an H4 shipment, and some of them are even comparable to H3 shipments. Uh, that said, let's begin. Uh, these ones are all going to be a lot faster. Just just like the H4 ones were a lot faster, uh, the H5 ones are going to be pretty fast as well, since they are not as important as the H2 and 3 states. Illinois is probably the one that most people go to most often. It ships 1,500 wood right away to cover half an Imperial upgrade. Uh, it has 10% farm... Uh, uh, one of its cards uh, gives a 10% farm and estate buff, which is... Nifty, but pretty much the last card you're going to send in your deck. Uh, the other, more impactful card, raises the flag range to 70, which is larger than the screen zoomed out. I'm serious, this thing's range is gargantuan. It also makes the flag boost HP by 5%, as well as the 10% attack. Uh, this card is still good and amazing, even after the nerf to 5% HP from 10%, but the card doesn't add as much as it used to, since the flag's base range got buffed all the way to 56 when you're in the Imperial Age without needing the upgrade, making the flag card only add 14 extra range when it used to add, like, 30. You know, not the greatest buff anymore. So, yeah, that's Illinois. Uh, instead, my go-to Federal Age 5 is Connecticut, believe it or not. Uh, this provides 1,500 wood uh, as well, you know, just like the previous. It adds two awesome cards. One is a three heavy cannon card, just a stronger buffer H5 version of the two heavy cannon card uh, that's normally available in H4. By the time you hit H5, however, three cannons by themselves might not be the strongest impacting thing in the world, but it's nice to have, and again, bigger than two heavy cannons. The other card is much better. It makes ships, buildings, and artillery train and build faster. The most important aspect of this is that the artillery train time affects heavy cannons. This, in combination with the factory tech, the Indiana Carbine Cav card I mentioned earlier, and the Knox Artillery Train card in H4, makes USA heavy cannons uh, 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 just produce, it makes them produce heavy cannons at a frankly stupid speed, and you'll find yourself even able to have 100 pop armies of pure heavy cannons if you want. It's a little dumb and you gotta see it to believe it. Uh, this is my go-to in 9 out of 10 games, but that's mostly because I use the Nox Artillery Train card and I know a lot of people forget that, cards, that card exists. So, there you go. New York is gonna be your go-to if you're running a mercenary build. It boosts mercenary stats by 25% as the state shipment, and provides two mercenary-based cards. The first adds an additional 25% stat buff to mercenaries, uh, for 50% in total, and ships two little bombards and four Napoleon guns. This gives you your Imperial mercenaries that, in kill, uh, that, that kill everything. So much fun. Uh, the other card is an infinite card that ships 10 Zwabe. 
and adds an extra's wallet to the shipment every time you send it, making it infinitely scaling. This card will eventually get to a point where sending it is your entire army just by itself. This is by far the best age up option should you be unlucky enough to end in a game that lasts an hour and a half, as that Zwave shipment is going to get real big and fat after a while. Lastly, te well, not lastly, Texas is kind of lame. It provides a fort upon age up, which is cool. Uh, uh, the first card is a Minutemen pop, uh, is, is that Minutemen pop out of destroyed buildings. I'm not sure why you would want this, since the ideal scenario is to send cards that make you win, and as a result, never have buildings to be destroyed in the first place, but whatever. Uh, the other card allows your forts to train armies for free, slowly, just like how California Gold Rush makes you train settlers for free. Uh, by this point in the game, though, you should have an overdrive economy and be able to afford armies no problem and at the drop of a hat. However, should you have, like, seven forts for some reason, this can be a nifty way to get mass Gatling guns. You know, when you don't just train them mass in mass anyways, because they're cheap and you're in age five. Florida also provides a fort wagon, and its two cards are a... Uh, standard 15% cavalry combat card that also slightly boosts train speed and movement speed, and a shipment for two cows per shipment in the game so far. By the time you send this card, you're going to have like 40 to 50 cows from it, but like, why? Again, at this point, you're probably popping off hard from eco and farms that says a stampede of cows is just going to get in the way of important battle micro by making you need to micro settlers to collect 40 indivi di different individual fucking cows. I hate everything about this card. As for the cow combat, yeah, the speed is nice, but if you really want to boost their stats, uh, they'll get almost as much from the Illinois flag as they will from the combat card, and the Illinois flag affects all of your units, not just the cow. Moral of the story, pick Illinois, Connecticut, or New York and pretend the other two don't exist. Well, that's all, folks. Have a wonderful day, and subscribe if you're new. Bye.